Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about Benjamin Franklin's daily schedule. It's kind of cool. He was one of the most accomplished people in the history of the United States, and he actually had a schedule that he lived by every day. Now, something kind of cool for me, I've always been a huge fan of Benjamin Franklin, always. I, I used to have quotes by Benjamin Franklin hanging all over my walls. A friend of mine once told me, he said, Ron, you are a modern day Benjamin Franklin, which I think was too big of a compliment and I don't think it's true. But the point is, I've always been a huge Benjamin Franklin fan. Well, about a year ago, I did an ancestry DNA test and how cool is it, I found out sometime in the last 12,000 years, I'm related to Benjamin Franklin. We have a common ancestor. Now, he's not my grandfather. It's the last 12,000 years. I'm not a direct descendant. It's a common ancestor, but kind of cool. So this made me even more interested in Benjamin Franklin. And in my study of him, I found out he had a daily schedule or a daily routine. And this is what he did. Every morning, he would wake up at 5 a.m., and from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., he had a daily routine. The first thought on his mind was, what good shall I do today? That was the first question he asked himself every single morning. That's a powerful question. It sets your focus for the day. It sets your intention for the day. And if you have that question at the front of your mind, what good shall I do today? Then during the day, whenever you get distracted with life distractions, you're going to be able to stay focused. So ask yourself every morning, if you want to model Benjamin Franklin, ask yourself every morning, what good shall I do today? And then he, would, he wrote in his autobiography, from 5 to 8 a.m., he would rise, he would wash, and he would address the powerful goodness. Powerful goodness was his word for God. So rise, wash, address the powerful goodness, and ask yourself, what good shall I do today? This will give you your focus. Then he would do what he called take on the resolution of the day. And I interpret that to mean just plan out your day. He has the overall focus, so what is he gonna do today? Now he takes on the overall focus for the res resolution of the day, where he begins to plan and structure and organize his day. It's been said that if you don't plan and organize and structure your day, then, and you just let your day happen around you, you're not gonna get that much accomplished. So he would take out the resolution of the day. The next thing that he would do in this five to eight window is he would prosecute the current study. Now that's a little bit of funny language for modern times, prosecute the current study. But what I take that to mean, and what others have taken that to mean, is that he always had something that he was learning. In other words, he always had something that he was engaging his brain in. Maybe he was learning a new language or learning a new skill or just reading about a new topic. He would prosecute the current study. He would, whatever he was studying on at that point in his life, he would focus on it during that time, and then he would eat breakfast. Personally, I skip breakfast. I, I try not to eat till 11 a.m. I do the intermittent fasting, but whatever works for you. So now it's 8 a.m. and it's time to get to work. He would organize his work schedule in this way. He would work from 8 to 12 and then 12 to 2 would be his lunch, but he worked through lunch. And I personally love to do this myself. I'll take my laptop and I'll go to a restaurant and I'll eat lunch and I'll work through lunch, maximizing my time during the day. So he worked from 8 to 12, and then 12 to 2 was in essence a working lunch. But it's more casual work. It's, more, it's kind of more relaxing work. You're eating and you're enjoying your food while you're working. And then 2 to 6, he continued his work. The way I look at it is this. 8 to 12, he would do intense, hard work and focus. 12 to 2, casual lunch, continue to work. Maybe it's you have business meetings, you wanna invite a, a, a prospect to lunch, but it's still work. And then two to six is more intense work again. Now one thing that is not allotted for in a schedule, and I'm gonna say that he probably did it, is he took 
breaks. Research and studies show us that if we can work for 45 minutes and take a 15 minute break and then work for 45 minutes and take a 15 minute break, you're gonna get more done if you can allow for breaks in your schedule. Your brain's not designed just to work intensely and focused for four hours with no breaks. So breaks aren't noted in Benjamin Franklin's schedule, but I gotta think he took breaks from eight to 12 and from two to six. So at 6 p.m., his day was finished. And this is the way he worded it. At 6 p.m., he would put things in their place. He, was, he believed in order and structure. And a lot of that can be evident in the fact that he had a daily schedule. But at 6 p.m., he put things in their place. The way, what I interpret this to mean is that at 6 p.m., he got everything organized. He put everything away that he was working on during the day. And number one, it organized it. And so it was a nice, clean, orderly place, but really what he was doing is setting himself up for success for tomorrow, because the next day when he began his work, he didn't have to get everything neat and organized. He had already organized it the night prior. Now it was 6 p.m. From 6 to 9 p.m., he allowed this three-hour window for supper, diversion, conversation, and examining the day. So now he's got everything in order. It's the evening time. He's gonna have dinner. He's gonna have conversation with friends. It's very evident in looking at Benjamin Franklin's life that he believed in conversation and debate. It's a great way to engage your mind and learn new things. He also believed in diversion and relaxing his brain. One of my favorite stories from the life of Albert Einstein was that when he was working on the great problems of the universe, when he was trying to solve something and his brain just could not solve the problem, he would play the piano. In other words, he would go to a diversion. He would relax his brain by focusing on something totally different. And Albert Einstein would play the piano. And as he was playing the piano, relaxing his brain, his subconscious mind would feed him the answer that he had been working on. And he would stand up and yell, ah, I've got it. Einstein's cousin said that when she heard Einstein playing the piano, she knew he was trying to solve a problem. Benjamin Franklin also put this in his life. Diversion, listening to music. Have something in your life at the end of the day that can relax your brain so you're not always focused about work. Have you ever jumped in the shower and you had this great idea? And you're like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. And you get out of the shower all excited. The founder of Atari once said, Anyone who has ever taken a shower who has had a great idea. It's the person who gets out of the shower and does something about it is the one that changes the world. What is it about taking a shower that gives you those great ideas? You know what it is? It's relaxing the brain. Just like Einstein would relax the brain by playing the piano. At the end of every day, Benjamin Franklin relaxed his brain. Music, diversion, conversation. But he also allowed time in here for examining the day, asking himself, what did I do good today? What were my successes? What were my failures? What could I do better tomorrow? So you need to allow time in your day, if you want to model Benjamin Franklin's schedule, to examine your day. You know, in the military, they call it a debriefing. You go on your mission, and when you come back from your mission, you do a debriefing, and you ask yourself, what went right on that mission? What went wrong on that mission? How can we do it better so the next time is an improvement? Once 9 p.m. arose, in this time, and it actually went all the way to 10 p.m., in this, in this window of time here, he would ask himself, what good did I do today? I think this is important because the human brain has a natural tendency sometimes to focus on the negatives. Oh my gosh, I messed up. I can't believe I did this. That, that was, I, I can't believe I did that. I am uh, in the business where I provide videos. Sometimes I'll get 500 comments. That was great. And then I'll get one comment. I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you wore this shirt. I can't believe you did that. And I will ignore the 500 positive comments and focus on the one negative. And that's sometimes how the human brain operates. Sometimes we have to force ourselves to focus on the good. And Benjamin Franklin did this at the end of every day. He would ask himself, what good did I do today? I think that's powerful forcing your brain to focus on the good and acknowledge the positive things that you accomplished during the day. So remember, he bookended his day. He woke up every morning, what good shall I accomplish today? And then he lived out his day and organized. And at the end of the day, he asked himself, 
what good did I do today? That's a real positive mindset and a way to keep yourself positive and focused on what you want to accomplish and the good things. Now, it's 10 p.m., the end of his day, and he would go to sleep at 10, and he would sleep till 5 a.m. You don't have to follow this 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. schedule, but what is important is that you get a schedule. Research and science tells us that if we can fall asleep at the same time every night and wake up at the same time every morning, we're gonna be more well rested because our body's gonna be in a rhythm. So one last thought on this. Benjamin Franklin, when he was 20 years old, he came up with 13 virtues to live by. Every week he would focus on a new virtue. Those 13 virtues were temperance, silence, order, resolution, frugality, industry, sincerity, justice, moderation, cleanliness, tranquility, chastity, and humility. These were his 13 virtues, and every week he would pick one. One week it might be humility, and that entire week he would focus on being humble. The next week it could be moderation. And this week he would just focus on being moderate in his life. Don't overeat, don't drink too much alcohol, moderation. So every week he had a new focus. Now you may look at this and you may think, wow, he had these 13 virtues. He had this daily life that he lived by. He must have been so structured and orderly and perfect. Benjamin Franklin wrote in his autobiography, that he never achieved the perfection that he strived for. But by striving for that perfection, he got better and better than he ever would have been if he had not have strived for that perfection. So when you watch this video and you're looking at all these virtues that Benjamin Franklin strived for and his daily schedule, how he organized his day, don't put all the pressure on yourself. Oh my gosh, I'll never live up to Benjamin Franklin. Well, guess what? Benjamin Franklin didn't live up to Benjamin Franklin. So if you enjoyed this video, comment below and tell me something that you learned from this video. If you like it, I appreciate a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Share it as well. And as you may know, I'm a USA memory champion. I've held the record for the fastest to memorize a deck of cards. If you want to memorize Benjamin Franklin's 13 virtues as I have, click the link below and get my memory training tips on how to memorize anything. Or if you just wanna be like Benjamin Franklin and always be learning something new, maybe you wanna learn about memory training. So click the link below. I have a free gift for you on how to improve your memory. Thanks guys. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought.